headers on the spreadsheet. It's not in great notation. You know, for any kind of project, you expect really nice notation. This is just a feel for how the spreadsheet's going to work. I've got the XY data set already in here. Uh, the mean X, well, I'm actually just going to go to the bottom here, and I'm going to type in a function, equals average. So it recognizes average is the mean here. And if I just, okay, it tells me what to do. I'll just ignore, no, that wasn't very successful. Equals, let's see if it's got mean. So it hasn't got mean as a command. That's why you go to average, okay? Open bracket, and then I need you to go. Click, there you go. And click and drag. Oh, still not working. I'll get there in a second. Equals average of click and drag, yeah? So I want the average from A3 to A11. And there it is, it's 17. If I just click on the bottom corner, see my cursor changes shape into a cross, I can just drag a cross. So I've got the average 17 and the average 23. So I'm just going to copy that in here now. 17 is the average for X. There are other ways of doing this, but I quite like that. And the mean for Y is 23. Now we knew that already, but the spreadsheet just worked it out for us very quickly. And then this is where the formulas kick in. Okay, so I'll just make that full screen so you might be able to see it a bit better. So in here I need a formula. What do we need first for a formula? Not numbers, before numbers. Not x and y equals, equation sign. In here, I want to equal the x value, click here. Subtract the mean x, click. Literally just what we did on the board by hand, press return. But the joy of a spreadsheet is click, bottom right hand corner, you're dragging down the formula. Okay? So it's doing all the work for you which is fantastic. Let's just have a little look down here. Equals SUM, add together all of the numbers. Strangely enough, it gives us zero. Yeah, the average distance from the mean is zero. That's the definition of the mean. You've got to equal them all out. So that's not much good to us. But let's do the Y minus Y bar. Equals Y value, subtract the mean of Y, enter and then drag down, okay? We know the addition is going to be no good. And let's do the final thing here. So x minus mean of x times by y minus mean of y. We've got to do that for each pair of values. So in here, equals this guy multiplied by this guy here. And notice all the values here are all negative except one. So let's just go over one more. This is x minus mean of x all squared. So this is equal to this column squared. So now squared, you can actually power of 2 for squared, or you can times it by itself. Yeah, it's your choice. You're going to go squared, it's a little hat, 2. So that's squared. And click and drag down. And the same for this one. y minus mean of y all squared. So equals y minus mean of y of this guy and then hat 2, and drag down. Fantastic. So we've got our spreadsheet here, and I'm going to get rid of these guys here, and I'm going to have all of this column here, uh, sorry, all of this row here. I'll just go back to here. Let's get rid of that, and I'll make it a particular color. Okay then, let's see how that looks. Now in here I'm just going to add up everything above. Now some of the totals I'll need, some of the totals I won't need. So let's just have a little look. View, full screen again. So down here I'm going to put equals SUM, the addition of all of the numbers above. Close bracket, return. And if I just drag along, it's going to work for all of these values here. Okay, so I've got everything I need now to help me work out the R value, the product moment correlation coefficient. Scott, from your vantage point, can you read out how to calculate R according to the formula on the board? Yeah. SXY. So what is SXY? Which of these is SXY? Or how do I get SXY?
Okay, right, I definitely need this guy there then, don't I? I need that negative 994. That's something I definitely need, okay? So I'm going to just highlight that in a bit of uh, red. Definitely need that guy. What else do I need? I need the number of values. Okay, what is the number of values? How many items in my data set? Nine, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine data points. Yeah, that's what we say. One cross to represent the information. Nine data points. Brilliant. So if I do this number here equals this number divided by nine, does this figure represent the covariance now? That's S, X, Y according to the formula. It's just a figure to represent how do the X and Y vary with each other, basically. Okay. What else do I need? Isn't there an uh, S of X and an S of Y somewhere? Yeah. So look at the formula for S of X. Isn't it the sum of X minus mean X all squared? And then do I not need to do equals this guy divided by 9? I'll do the same here. Equals this guy divided by 9. But then what do I have to do? There's one more operation for S of X and S of Y. Can you see it on the board? Square root. Okay, so I'm now going to do equals the cell above. Hat. 0 0.5 is square root, power of a half. And here equals the number above, hat, 0 0.5. Okay, so I've got one, two, three numbers. So let's work with those numbers. So the R value, I'll just put there. And let's feed in the formula here. The R value equals... The covariance, this guy, divided by, open bracket, this guy, times by, this guy. So according to our big fancy spreadsheet, the R value is negative 0 0.9648. So let's just, yep. How do you get 156.84? Anyone help? Liam, this 1404, yeah, was the sum of all of these guys. But according to the formula, I've got to divide it by N. On average, how much per, per item, per data point, yeah? So there's always a divide by N. Yeah, this guy here also, Scott, was divided by N. So these guys are all divided by N. And look at that value here. Let's just check this. Go back to your TI Inspire. Guys, let's finish it off. And on our TI Inspire... Done, done, done. Same thing. Yeah, so calculator does it efficiently and quickly. Spreadsheet goes about it a very long way. But look, we get exactly the same, exactly the same answer. So that's what the calculator is doing automatically. It's doing all of that processing and just returning the single figure. But that's where the figure comes from. Yeah, so the R value tells you how close do your points fit with the line of best fit, basically. Yeah. Um, you're not going to understand all of that, but you just need to, need to be able to build up that spreadsheet knowledge, how to work out the R value kind of manually by spreadsheet. Yeah, And that is only for the internal assessment. So you'd be expected to show that depth of working out to get the R value. Now on Wednesday, um, I'll show you how to work out Y equals MX plus B using the long method as well. Okay, all good? This is not on an exam at all. This is only on internal assessment. OLP, yeah, I'm going to post these.